Siren comprises a compressed air supply which is deflected by stationary deflectors to exit radially through stator ports. A rotor with spaced ports rotates between the stator and deflector, thereby opening and closing the stator ports. Stationary vanes are disposed at circumferentially spaced locations and constitute together with a deflector plate and stator and rotor housing. Plenums there are fewer rotor ports than stator ports, which generates an out-of-phase acoustical pattern which creates an acoustic combination from the stator ports of an acoustic output at a distance from the siren which is more uniform spatially. The thermoplastic seal between the stator and the rotor has minimal clearance under operating conditions having been run in and plastically deformed at a temperature higher than for normal operation background of the invention this invention relates to sirens in particular the invention is directed to a siren for circumferentially radial distribution of acoustic output for alerting communities for instance in emergencies at nuclear power stations or an event of other calamities sirens can be of an Integral blower type siren where the sound generation includes an internal air compressor rotary valve combination, and this is inherently of low efficiency. The alternative siren design employs an axial flow which includes an external compressor. Although it incorporates efficient compression, it is only unidirectional, and the bending of sound into the radial horizontal plane creates inefficiencies such that the horizontal plane acoustic power generation is reduced. Turbulence of air in such a siren acts as a pneumatic or acoustic resistance to the siren. As such, therefore known sirens for warning and alerting operate at a relatively low acoustical efficiency. The efficiency is a measure of the acoustical output, usually in the horizontal plane, relative to the electrical or mechanical input power. In the applicant's experience, this efficiency varies between 3% to 10% for commercially available sirens. In the known sirens where the acoustical output is generated in an axial direction, usually upwardly, a horn or the like is provided for turning the acoustical output to radiate in a horizontal direction. For a siren to be heard over a wider geographical area, it is desirable to radiate the acoustical output horizontally, and many of the commercially available sirens do not provide an internal mechanism for inherently creating such horizontal radiation. It is only by the provision of the appendage horn that this horizontal radiation is achieved. The redirecting of this radiation pattern, either through the use of deflectors or bent tubes or horns, or by some similar guiding, reflecting or diffracting mechanisms. All result in a loss of available sound energy in the horizontal plane, compared to an inherently radially radiating siren. This redirection of acoustical output impairs the acoustic efficiency of the siren performance. A further problem which is encountered in known sirens is that the mechanism within the sirens generating the sound is of a nature which causes excessive turbulence of the compressed gas or air passing through the siren mechanism, such that the acoustical output and the efficiency is further reduced. Furthermore, known sirens do not provide an efficient or adequate degree of sealing action between moving parts such that leakage of compressed air between Moving parts further impairs the output efficiency and causes turbulence within the acoustical generating mechanism. When the relatively rotational ports are not in alignment, namely, the ports are closed, ideally no air should flow outwardly to the siren horn. In actual fact, there is always some airflow or leakage, and this leakage is a significant source of lost siren efficiency. B. Space between the inside wall of a stator member and outside wall of a rotor member is often only a few thousandths of an inch or less but even with such close spacing the loss of efficiency is significant. Where in commercial, community type warning sirens having such close clearances are impractical, the losses are even higher.
the seal for an application to a siren where there is relatively high speed between the inside face and the outside wall of the stator and rotor, respectively, such speed being in the order of 10,000 feet per minute or greater, presents a difficulty since this generates unacceptable heat and or friction where the seal comes into contact with the stationary face of the stator. This heat and or friction tends to destroy the seal and or the rotor or stator, or to increase the torque requirements to unacceptable levels. Another problem with sirens arises in the desirability to radiate the sound uniformly in the horizontal plane. This is often accomplished by employing four or rear more horns to distribute the sound as uniformly as possible in the circumferential horizontal plane, where there are spaced ports or Outlets for horns circumferentially around the location of the siren, the acoustical output generated from the one horn effectively diminishes or cancels the acoustical output from adjacent horns so that at locations remote from the siren the acoustical output is consequently diminished and the efficiency of the reception is reduced. At any given observation point, the sound yield will originate not only from the horn pointing most directly towards the observer, but also from all the other horns. Since the effective sources of sound are near the mouths of the horns, the sound from each horn will travel a distance dependent upon the relationship between the observation point and the horn geometry. With the observation point directly in line with one horn, there will be a series of siren to observer distances at which the sound from the two horns adjacent to the centrally positioned horn will travel exactly one half of the acoustic wavelength for the particular siren frequency farther than the sound from the central horn. The sound from the central horn would be exactly 180 degrees out of phase with the sound from the adjacent horns. Thus, if the siren has only three horns and the level from each off-axis horn would be three decibels less than that from the central horn at the observation point, complete cancellation would result and the sound level would be zero. At some other observation distance, the path length difference would be one wavelength, and the sound level would be three decibels greater than if only one horn were radiating. Thus, the level would fluctuate from 0 to 3 decibels more than that from one horn alone. Similarly, if the observer traveled in a circle about the siren, the level would fluctuate as the relationship between the path length changed due to the changing geometry. A similar or somewhat more complex effect occurs when the siren has more than three horns at a constant measurement distance from the siren, the level may fluctuate several dB above and below the median value. The result is that the alerting effectiveness is less at some locations than at others the same distance from the sirens. With the horn arrangement of the invention, these undesirable acoustic characteristics are reduced. Not by rotating the horns, which would result in undesirable mechanical reliability problems, but through internal design. Accordingly, the distance from which a siren may effectively be heard will be markedly affected and reduced by these inefficient operating characteristics in known sirens. There is accordingly a need to provide a siren which minimizes the above problems and provides a more efficient acoustical output and, for this purpose, to minimize the air turbulence generation within the siren, and to ensure that leakage of compressed air between moving parts is minimized. Furthermore, it is desirable to provide a siren where the acoustical outputs generated by different output ports of the stator are in a phase relationship relative to each other so that they complement each other, that in a spatial distribution at a removed distance from the siren the Effective sound generation is additive and hence more efficient and more uniform. Summary of the invention A siren comprises a compressed gas supply means with a guide for directing the gas supply in a first flow direction. Stationary deflector means changes the gas flow direction substantially transversely to the first flow direction. Stator means is in substantial alignment with a rotor. 
means and includes space state or port means. The rotor means with spaced rotor port means is mounted for rotation about an axis substantially parallel to the first gas flow direction and stationary vane means with the deflector means and the stator means form plenums. On rotor rotation the rotor ports move periodically into and out of alignment with the stator ports thereby to permit the periodic egress of air from the plenums. By having stationary deflector means to change the air flow direction from an axial direction to a radial direction smoothly, turbulence generation is minimized and the air flow is retained substantially laminar with the stationary veins spaced circumferentially about the axis. Likewise no turbulence is created by a rotating vein action moving across the air flow. The air compression can then take place in the plenum defined between the deflector plates, veins and stator, while there is a separate chopper or valving efficiency created by the rotating ported rotor, with the first flow direction being vertical and the transverse air flow direction being horizontal, a more efficient acoustical horizontal output is attained within the siren mechanism. The number of ports in the rotor is fewer than the number of ports in the stator. The stator ports are substantially rectangular type slots or slits, while the ports in the rotor are larger and rectangular, and more nearly of square dimensions. By having this ratio equal to 2 to 1 between the stator and rotor ports, as in one embodiment, adjacent ports are alternately simultaneously opened and closed. This generates a square wave acoustic output with omitted alternating pulses. The fundamental frequency is half that of one where the rotor ports and stator ports are equal in number. The second harmonic of the output is approximately the same amplitude as the fundamental frequency, and the acoustic combination of adjacent horns is a result in double frequency siren, since the ports on either side of an open port are closed and these ports would be the major source of the spatial fluctuation, with the remaining ports about the circumference contributing less acoustic energy in this direction, and the adjacent horns are no longer emitting sound simultaneously. The spatial fluctuation is substantially reduced at any remote location from the siren. In fact, pulses from adjacent ports combine acoustically in the far field to form an acoustic square wave from the constituent pulse strains. This rotor and stator port relationship between the rotor and stator improves the acoustic reception at points remotely located from the siren. Between the rotor and stator there is provided a seal to minimize air leakage between the two relatively spaced and moving components. The seal is of a material having a low coefficient of friction, ability to cold flow, a hardness less than the material of the stator against which it contacts, and a coefficient of thermal expansion greater than that of the stator and rotor. The seal is run in by operating it initially at a temperature higher than the normal operating temperature, and thereafter removing the heat such that a minimal spacing is obtained between the seal and stator during normal rotation of the rotor relative the stator. The seal is mounted about the ports of the rotor and includes a lip directed towards the stator for forming the seal with the stator component. This characteristic reduces the ability of air to leak between the stator and the rotor, and hence the efficiency of acoustic generation is improved.